Hey everybody, Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And now we are on part 12 of this build of this beautiful Airfix Austin K2 ambulance, known as KT. And uh, yeah, really, really pleased with this kit. It's going together beautifully. Um, so there we go. There is the front, as I said, I was going to sand it and get rid of all the, the seam and everything. So that's the way I've decided to do that, rather than have to deal with that when it's all attached to the rest of the uh, the body and everything so that's going to look lovely when it's all done um, when it's all painted up I've gone round I've done the pre-shading on the roof and everything and I forgot to do the pre-shading on the dashboard so I'm gonna have to get the pre-shading paint out again but I uh, pre-shaded the back and that's, as you can see what I've done is put, as you see we did before lighter colors in between the ribs and then when we spray it green it gives it that just a bit more body I mean you're never really gonna look up there but you can see the effect of it on that bulkhead you can see the the light you know the light areas in the middle compared to the dark areas around the outside it just gives it a bit of effect a bit of a different look so there's our body there which is done we've got our chassis there which is done I'm going to put these back in the box for safety um, so here we go now I want to do these clear parts so these clear parts on the sprue they're going to go into the windscreen here. These are the only two we're going to use. We're not going to use any of these. These are obviously for a later version. So I'll have some spares. When, when that comes out, we'll have some spare clear parts to mess with. So I've got some hair on there. I'm going to take that off. So I'm going to do my usual thing as well as I did on the door. If you remember when I did this, this window on this door, as you can see, it has a seamless look to it. It just looks like it's part of the door. And what we're going to do is get rid of this shiny edge. Now, if I can get this in the light, you can see there when I hold these clear parts up you can see all down here you get this sort of shiny chrome like edge and I want to get rid of that and the way I'm going to get rid of it is with a sharpie so what I'm going to do is go around the part like so and get black ink into all the areas on the outside edge okay it doesn't matter if it goes onto the clear part because it'll just come off with a drop of alcohol you can see I've really gone onto the clear part there. So I'm just going around with the sharpie. You can use any black felt tip pen, it doesn't have to be a sharpie. Just go round and cover all those edges in black ink. Just like so. Probably give it two coats. Make sure we get this edge as well around the back. And there we are, and we'll do the same on this one. Go around with a sharpie, and I'll do the same, and then I'll go round it again in a minute when I come back. But um, where's the lid gone? There it is. Uh, so we're going to get these off the sprue. Now we're going to have to be very careful. You have to be very careful with clear parts. Sometimes they can shatter, so it's a good guarantee of not breaking them. Is to get yourself a little saw. Here's a little saw. These are great. These little things. Um, absolutely awesome. It's called a JLC. You can see this is all broken. You can see there's a JLC. That's what it is with the wooden handle. You can get them on Amazon, I think, and eBay and everything. Basically, we could just cut this off the sprue with a saw rather than cutting it with nippers because one of the problems with cutting clear parts, I'll see if I can show you here. See how that went? Rather than cutting like a piece of plastic sprue, if we cut this sprue, you will hear it just comes off and it sort of cuts through it whereas with clear the nature of the plastic is generally more brittle and what it'll do is shear away and snap rather than actually cut away so sometimes what happens is you cut the part off the sprue and what it does it snaps it sends a shockwave through the plastic and it actually snaps the sprue away and you end up with like a white splinter if you've done a few kits you'll probably have seen it you end up with a white splinter, so we're going to come in and just remove an excess bit of sprue of the knife there. Because there's nothing left behind it, it's okay to cut it now. And then with a 400 grit flat stick, I'm going to come along and sand that nib away. Just like so. Here we are. Do the same here. There we go, just like that. So, and now we can come along with our Sharpie 
and we can go around all the edges again and make sure we get rid of that chrome look to it. So you can see now with this part here, if I hold this in the light, if I can get it to go, you can see here you have a bright silver edge. If I turn it around, look at that one. You don't have a bright silver edge. So it makes the window or well, the clear part looks like it looks like it's in a rubber frame, which it probably would have been in reality. Or in some sort of Hessian or some, something to damp it from the steel, otherwise it would have shattered it all the time. So there we go. Make sure we get run around the edges and just not put that on my new modelling board because it might leave black marks behind. There we go, go around there, go around that back edge. And there we go. So that's all done. Now we're good to go. And we'll do the same on here. The reason I didn't paint it black rather than use the black magic marker is the paint will be more of resistance to the to the um, to the glue than the black pen will so it's better to use a black pen we do it in here go all around and get black ink on all the edges that way we know we're not going to end up with any funny tan looking plastic anywhere because it'll stick out like a sore thumb when we see it against the green camouflage obviously if you're doing yours like in an, it's called an Alex scheme in a tan color it won't be so important but there we go so we've got all the way around that frame it's all done and all the way around the edges now we can let that dry come along with some um, alcohol and just rub away where we don't want the black ink to be. Okay, so we've got our <coughs> glazed panels here ready to go in, and the ink is pretty dry. Now we've got one here with a bar going across and a windscreen wiper, you can see there. Okay, you can see or not. And then we've got one here which is plain. So the plain one's going to go in this side, in the left hand side, and the one with the bar and the wiper is going to go on the other side, and the bar is actually on the outside. So the wiper will be close to the inside and we can see that clearly we'll get the instructions which are here in the box we can see that clearly here if we go over the page where we actually fit it which is way back here you can see there the bar goes on the driver's side and the wiper is towards the center so that's the way it's going to go so we've got that dropped in there now um, it's a bit dirty and stuff we're going to clean it up in a minute and basically, uh, what we're going to do is put some glue in there. Now, there are all sorts of different glues. I've talked about this before, I think, in this series. All sorts of different clear glues you can get. I like to use liquid cement to glue my clear parts in um, because I never trust clear glues are going to hold them in. And also, sometimes these clear glues can dry a bit like a bit, bit like a PVA, and they will tend to um, they will tend to be kind of rubbery. Okay. So the glue is going to go in from the inside. I'm going to go for this corner here because it's in the middle and far away. So if we do get anything down there, it won't show. And then also from that corner because it's going to be hidden by the roof. So what I'm going to do is get some glue on the brush and I'm going to work my way over to it. I'm not going to go bang onto the clear part. What I'm going to do is touch the plastic. Here you go. And you can see the glue is running under the glass without me hardly even touching it. Watch, I'll do it again. There we go. I see it's running around this side as well. So what I may as well do is pop this window into here. Just drop that in there. Like so. So that one is in. So then what we can do is put some glue in the centre there and it will glue both at the same time. There we go. Okay, and then we can do the same up here. Come up to the centre actually. And you can see the brush is hardly touching the clear part at all. And the glue is running around the edge. 
and that is how I like to glue my clear parts. <clears throat> you need a nice steady hand. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to leave that and not touch it. I just want to get a bit more because I don't think anything ran into this corner here. I think I'll just try a drop in that corner there. Okay, and we can see now we have clear parts glued in there. And if I turn it over, we have no glue marks anywhere. Now, if I touch those now, we will get problems. So I'm not going to touch them. I'm not going to do anything with them. I'm just going to put that down and let that sit there for at least an hour and just let it dry and let it weld itself together. Okay, and then we can go and clean the glass up. Well, we'll mask it and we'll clean it up afterwards. The other thing I might look at doing is masking the inside as well. Because otherwise we're going to paint this bar on the outside so you'll have that matte green. But when you look at the inside, it will be shiny. So I might, I might um, mask the inside as well and paint the inside as well. So we end up with a green line on the inside. But there we go. That's those clear parts in with no glue marks whatsoever. Okay, so that's how I like to do it. And they will be solid. They won't fall out and they'll be cool. So I'll see you in a couple of hours or a couple of seconds. Right, here we are, 24 hours later, and I've got the windows masked up. I haven't done the masking on camera because basically I need to do it through a magnifier and I can't film what I'm doing through a magnifier. And I wanted to get the magnifier to make sure I was getting into the corners. But I'll basically show you how I've done it and what I've done. I've used this thing here. This is an Infini Easy Cutting Mat, Type A. Really, really handy little tool to get. One, you've got this beautiful cutting grid on this side. You can see that it has these lines in it. And I'll show you how to use it in a minute. But the other beauty is if you turn it over, you've got a, a cutting mark for your photo etch parts. And you, when, we'll be doing some photo etch with this model. But when you cut photo etch, you need to cut it on a hard surface. Otherwise, you'll bend the photo etch as you cut it. So it's two, two, two tools in one. There's four types, A, B, C and D. I have done reviews of them. If you look back on my channel, you'll see them. Just put Infini, go to my channel and search Infini. Uh, I've done all the sanding sticks and these cutting mats and everything. But if you're only going to buy one, I would suggest this one, the Type A. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't know how I live without it. I know I lived without it, but I don't know how I did masking without it. So basically, you have some masking tape. You can see across the top here, there are demarcations 1.9.8.7. If you want a piece of tape six millimeters wide, it doesn't necessarily work out that you go six six divisions of one will give you six mil. I think it's because if you wanted one, they've allowed for the cut. So what you need to do is sort of measure what it is you want to cut, and then you know on here. So with a rule, come along here and measure sort of on there, and you can see that that is like you know it's, it's nearly twelve millimeters. So you go on there, it's, yeah, there's nothing there which is nearly 12. Come across to here, and there is a line there that's falling within nearly 12. So we can put that tape down there, like that. We'll cut one side to get ourselves a nice square datum edge. I'll come over one, one line more. Okay, and we can pick off that tape there. Get rid of that. Okay, put that down there, that's put it in the bin get it out of the way so if I use my rule here I can see that if I go just under the 12 just under the 12 is that line there okay so I can cut down here so I have now got a piece of tape which is dead parallel under the 12 millimeter and then I'll cut the end off I have now got a piece of tape which is under 12 millimeters, just under 12 millimeters, and it has a square end. Now, rather than try and cut a perfect length, so you you know you just working on one dimension, working on this dimension rather than trying to get this dimension as well. What I'll do is I'll cut a piece here which is three blocks long, which is 15 millimeters. Just flick up the corner, grab my tweezers, and I've got there a lovely piece of tape which should fit in there, put it into the corner, push it down. Look at that, it fits beautiful. I wish it had gone that well the first time I did it. Okay, so we put that piece of tape in there, 
and then I can cut another piece then two blocks wide which is 10 millimeters these lines are five millimeters apart pick up the corner just like so just like that and then place that one into that side and that way you're, you're dealing with both sides individually rather than trying to get everything to line up perfectly okay so that's how I've done that I've also masked the back side because if you remember the clear parts went in from behind so they're bigger on the back than they are on the front so you'll end up with this sort of massive wide you know glazing on the back with a black line through it so what I've done is I've used the same size masking tape as I cut on the front I've used the same size on the back and we'll also then have paint across here where that bar is rather than having something shiny so it'll look much better when you look inside the cab so that's how I've done that as I say I'm sorry I couldn't show you on camera me doing it but that's basically what I've done okay so get your tape get it into the corner you get it concentrate on one corner get it square job done okay so that's that so what I'm going to do now is give this a spray again with black so it's got a decent bit of thickness there and we'll also get that frame and then um, and then when we paint it when we paint it green we'll have that nice black base to go on so we won't end up with anything sort of being translucent and green so I'll get that painted black now and then I'll come back when I've done that in fact I'll probably come back when I've got it all painted green um, if you remember I did the pre-shading here I forgot to do the dashboard so I'll do the dashboard but we've got the pre-shading there so I'm going to spray all that green so that just shows through I'm going to spray the back of this radiator black as well so what I'm doing here I've got lumps of blue tack it's much better to use white tack than blue tack because white tack doesn't contain as much oil uh, so we've got these battery boxes here stuck down so I can now stick them over that way turn these over and now we can get them all primed up in black as well uh, the other thing I've done while we were here I've painted the inside of the radiator grill and the inside of the bonnet black and that way when we look up through underneath we won't see a great load of tan plastic the bonnet's going to fit like that on there when you look up underneath you'll see black rather than a load of tan plastic okay so that's what I've done there right so I don't know why they've got a radiator in there because you're not going to see it through the grill but um you know it's there so we're going to fit it so I'm going to get that painted black get the green done and then I'll come back when that's all done and we'll do some more assembly okay so that's our painting done so you can see all primed in black and then painted green we've done our dashboard with steering wheel and we've got our gear stick and handbrake there so the next thing we need to look at with this dashboard we have decals to apply for the gauges here and I tend not to put decals down on matte paint they tend not to stick so I will put some gloss in there and I will use some I don't know I'll probably use some aqua gloss uh, I'll get it out of the here it is here where are we where is my aqua gloss gone here it is so this is a, a product called uh, Alclad Aqua Gloss. I got it from Hero Boy. Lots of people sell it. It's a very, very good gloss varnish. It's, uh, it's kind of, um, it's, I don't know if it's water-based, but the main rule is that you must not shake it. Okay, you can decant it directly from the bottle to an airbrush and spray it, and it gives a really good gloss finish, and we will see that later on. But for now, what I'm going to do is just using this toothpick or cocktail stick whatever you want to call it I just want to put a drop into there where the decal is going to go as you can see it's pooled it's puddled got a big drop in there get some more in here just like so just put that down and let it find its way down the cocktail stick we'll see if we can take some of that out of there as well in fact there is too much in there it's uh, it's way too deep so we'll take some from there and all I want to do is get a gloss
gloss coating down. Just so the decal has something shiny to stick to. Now I'm going to get a cocktail, uh, a cotton bud, and just remove some of that from there. There we go. That's a bit too much on there. There you go. You can see we've just got some gloss on there now. So that will uh, give us something nicer for the uh, decals to stick to. So we can leave that to dry. Now I'm going to unmask these windows on the inside because it's going to be difficult to do when it's all assembled. So I'm going to grab a pointy tool, just lift the corners here, and then with a pair of tweezers, just pull away that tape. And the same with that one. Same with that one. And then get under there. Get under there and we'll get under there. We can grab that one. Grab that one. And grab that one. And there we go. And that's another reason why I like to stick the, part, the clear parts in with liquid cement. That way they're welded in. If I used a, a, one of these acrylic glues, they can you can pop the windows out and stuff. But you can see there, we've got the glazing all masked up. Or the masking removed, should I say. So we've got a nice matte frame around there now. And we've got that matte line across the centre. So we're not looking at a, um, you know, just a flat shiny panel on the inside. I really wish Airfix had a moulded a line on there, but um, we're also going to unmask the outside. And normally I wouldn't do this, but I forgot to do the wiper. So I'm just going to remove that masking from there, and then what we'll do is we'll put some more masking tape on there, and then paint the or we'll, we'll spray the wiper, the wiper blade. You can see I forgot to do it, so uh, we'll get that done when the paint's a bit harder. So, um, I think I'm going to stop there for a minute, and then once this is dry, we'll get those decals down. Okay, you can see there what I've done. I've masked off the, the wiper blade, and then just brushed some paint on. So we can remove that masking tape from there. there we are you can see the wiper blade is now painted <laughs> so uh, there we go and the only reason I brushed it on is because I couldn't be bothered to get the airbrush dirty and have to clean it all again just for painting that one little wiper blade so we can basically let that dry now and then we could just put another piece of masking tape over there on the inside what I'll probably do is get one thin strip and put it over the whole thing um, when, when we assemble it and then I'll just have one strip to rip off which will be easy but I hope you can agree it does look so much better to have those frames painted on the inside than not so there we are right has this dried yet looks like it's probably getting there so we can look at getting our decals ready decals for those of you in the uh, on the other side of the pond um, so we can get our bag of decals opened, like so. And as it would happen, the decals we want are actually right here. I believe there's another one that goes on the inside of the cab, yes. There's one that goes in here somewhere, I think. Well, I found it, it was down here. I remember, I remember seeing something. So we've got this plaque, decal number three. This black is going to go on the side, so I've put some clear on there, as you can see, I've brushed some clear onto there. Now I'm going to get these decals cut out. Um, in fact, I've started the video, and I've started the camera going, and I don't, I'm not in the slightest bit prepared for doing any decals. So let me uh, go away and come back. Right, so here we have our decal sheet, and this is something that scares a lot of people. Um, 
got the scissors. I don't recommend cutting decals with a knife, especially if you're cutting close to them. Reason being, when you use a knife, you are cutting through the material and as the blade goes through, it tends to raise. You, you, can, you can feel this for yourself. If you get a knife and cut through the paper, and then you feel it, you can feel like a raised ridge. As the knife cuts, it's sort of like a, when a farmer plays a field, it sort of pulls up some of the material and pushes it up to the side. And you'll have the raised edge, which will show on the decal. Whereas if you cut it with a pair of scissors, you slice the paper and you get no raised edge. It feels just as smooth. And you can see there the difference. If I push them down level, you can see the scissor cut to your left is almost invisible whereas the knife cut is very visible and that's because it has this raised edge on it so when cutting decals always use scissors don't use a knife of course if you're cutting like I am now away from the actual what your the decal itself it doesn't really matter so there we go so we're going to get this sheet put back away always keep your decals in the bag on their own separate okay you don't want any splashes or anything getting on them and I tend to put them in the bottom of the box face down. Unfortunately a lot of manufacturers tend to put them in the bottom of the box face up and then when they're in transit the sprues get on the top and move around and scratch them so I always put them in the bottom of the box face down. Okay so we've got our three decals here that we're going to put on the dashboard or two for the dashboard and one for the centre console. So I'm just going to cut that extra off there. So <clears throat> right, lots of different ways of doing this. The other thing I always do is remove the number. You can see on there we've got the one, the two and the three next to them. So I'm going to cut those, cut that away, cut that three away and then I'll cut my decal off. Okay, so I've got that decal. Now that one is going to go that way round, so that side is up and it's going to go onto that side there. So what I'm going to do, a lot of people tell you to get a bowl of water, I just tend to do a drop of water on the cutting mat, just like so. Grab a pair of tweezers, dip the decal in the water, okay, and then just place it down and let it sit there just for a couple of minutes. Now I'm going to use a setting solution. I use these two, Micro Set and Sol. There's lots and lots of different ones. I have lots of different ones. I have some new ones to try out actually. But I tend to always go back to Micro Set and Sol because they are very, very good and I know they work very well. There are hotter ones about, like this one here, for example. This is the MarkFit Super Strong made by Tamiya. The trouble is with this, it will dissolve your paint. So, you know, most paints will be dissolved by that, so be very, very careful. There's some new ammo ones as well I have to try out. Um, but to be honest, the Micro Set and Sol, the, the trouble is they're becoming quite expensive. Now then, so now I can see that on here I can move that decal so I know that it's ready to go. So I'm going to take my micro set, just get a drop on a brush, brush is ruined, and I'm just going to put some micro set in that area where I've put that gloss varnish, and then I can pick this up with my tweezers and just need three hands to do this. I'm going to use, I'll do, hold it like this and then I can hold the paper with my left hand. Just grab a cocktail so you can use anything to do this and just slide the decal into place on the model. Don't push it down or anything. And then using a cocktail stick or anything you want to use, just get it positioned where you want it. Okay, we'll have it square to the floor. So it's just some kind of data plaque that it's probably about what oils to use and where reverses and all that. Quite worse on that side, I do not know. So grab a cotton bud and then we're just going to roll the cotton bud over the decal like that, pushing down. And what we're doing is squeegeeing out any water or anything that's there. And that, my friends, is that. Okay, so that is in place. And that will dry there and that will be absolutely fine. Now then, with these here, <clears throat> I get number one. I can cut number one away from the sheet. 
remember to take the number away and grab my tweezers put it in some water let it sit there just let it sit there for a minute we can use something to see when it's come undone <clears throat> and I know that number one is going to go on the left hand side of the dashboard and it's going to be the black part in the centre is going to form like a Y so that is actually like the correct way up all right so grab a cocktail stick yes we can see it's moving so it's ready to go so I can grab some micro set just put a drop in there too much grab a cotton bud just soak it up and then again with my tweezers hold that like that and then just slide the decal off roughly into place get this clamp off of here and I, can, I need to turn it around I'm going to have to get something under it I've messed this up because I've put it on in the wrong orientation so I'm just going to try and get under it lift it and bring it around to the correct orientation and then put it back down and it's still not correct we can see we've got a bit of a register issue here I will show you now what I mean by that and then just using the cocktail stick we can just get it roughly into position which is going to be very difficult because we have this register issue so we get some water on the brush the water will get under the decal and make it a lot easier to move. Yes, unfortunate we have a register issue and I will tell you all about that now. Need to turn it again to the right orientation and hopefully you can see from what I'm doing here you do actually have plenty of opportunity to play with them move them around without destroying them there we go and then with a the cotton bud, you just roll it down. Now, I just mentioned just now, I said we have a register issue. If you look closely at that decal, you can see on the bottom we have a white band going around. Okay? Can you see that there? There's a white band going around the bottom. What's happened? They printed the white and then they've printed the black and they're out of, they're, they're not in line. So what's basically happened is the white is showing through on the bottom. So what, what I've had to do is position the decal off centre and then what we'll do is we'll pick that up later with a drop of paint or something. But uh, you can see on there, that you can see around the bottom, it's almost like the white is here then the black has been printed over here sort of thing, whereas it should be directly on top of it. And it's a problem with a lot of decals, uh, you do see it quite a lot. I have complained to companies before and they've sent me replacements, so if you do get the issue you don't and you're not happy about it send the uh, send a complaint and the company will generally replace the decal sheet for you now we may have the same issue with this one but the beauty is with this one the bottom is all white so you can see on this one the bottom is all white so if there if it is our register it should be okay so once again we can grab some micro set Just put that in place there, let that sit there. And then once this decal is ready to come off, ready to move, and we're good to go. So 
I'm going to put this clamp back in there to hold it horizontal, just like so. Should be good to go now. Yep, we're good to go. So we can grab our tweezers, hold it from the top in my left hand. Make sure the micro set is nicely placed and then get the orientation better this time. We'll pull the decal down. And there we go. Get some more water on there, it's going to make it easier to move. He says it doesn't want to move, so we get the brush under it. Again, we have a register issue on this one, which is a problem. It's going to look odd. But luckily, because of the nature of the model, it's not going to be that visible. Roll that down. I can see that it's off to one side, so we'll just put some more water on it. Get the brush under the decal, just give it a lift. <clears throat> and then we can push it over again. One of the issues here may be the fact that I've used micro set. Now, sometimes it can be very difficult to move the decals when they got micro set on them because particularly like with that border models Lancaster I've discovered that if I put micro set down first as soon as you put the decal down it, it, it just sticks down so that might be an issue here but they, are, they do feel very soft and very thin so you may get away with not using any decal setting solutions it's very difficult to get this in the right place because we've got that register problem. What I'm trying to do is get the bit that's out of register to sit outside the circle. The moulded circle. That's still not dead right, but you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get that moulded, that excess edge, which is on this one, it's around the top. I'm trying to get that to sit outside of the moulded circle so that it, it can be dry brushed out. I think at the end of the day we're just going to have to make do with what we've got. But no, they are not very nice at all. Yeah, it's, uh, it's proving very difficult because it wants to sit, the circle decal wants to sit in the moulded line, obviously, but I'm trying to push it out and it doesn't want to go out. So I'll keep playing with it and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Right, so moved on a little bit now. I've gone in with the detail, painted the black, painted the black around the steering wheel rim there, you can see. Oops, I don't know where that went. It flew off somewhere. <laughs> there we go. Glad that happened in a way, <clears throat> because um, it's something you need to know as a beginner. If you're holding something in tweezers or something and it flies off, don't ever just jump out of your chair and move back, whatever, because chances are you'll roll your chair over the whatever it is you've dropped or stand on it or something. So just sit still, look around your feet, look around an area on the floor, move your feet to that area, stand up. Where this was, it was actually behind me, and if I'd have rolled my chair back, I probably would have rolled over it. So worth bearing in mind. Anyway, um, so we've got that there now. So I've done the detail painting on there and I went round the, with the brush round the rim of the actual gauges to get rid of that white bit that was sticking out there. So it looks a little bit better now. And then I've gone over with a matte varnish on this one as well 
just to get those to blend in. So now, the, remember these gauges would have had a glass face to them. So once again, I'm going to get my Alclad 2 Aqua Gloss. And this time I'm going to use a paintbrush. And I'm just going to dip my brush into the Aqua Gloss and just put a drop in there and a drop in there. As you can see, quite thick because it does shrink back a lot when it dries. I just let it form a puddle. Make sure it's gone all the way out to the edge. And that'll just sit there. You can see it's like a quite a deep puddle, and that'll just sit there and dry back, and then we'll have a nice glossy finish, and it will look like glass, which is what we're after. So we're gonna have to leave that to dry for probably a good 10-20 minutes, and then we'll see how it looks then. So here we are now, 24 hours later. Put the light on, there we go. So as you can see, I've masked the back of the windscreen, I've left a little bit of a lip on there on the tapes we've got something to grab to tear it off. Um, I've remasked the front there so when we'll come to do a matte coat and everything we will be okay for that. So that's all good. Um, I've got the gear stick here, I've painted the knob on the gear stick black. I've dry brushed some aluminium paint onto the handle to make it look like it's sort of worn out, to look a bit of steel on there. Uh, we've got the faded effect on the inner cab roof there as you can see. Um, and we've got the instrument panel there with all our knobs painted and everything. It's had a wash of oil, just some um, just some dark grey oil washes you've seen me do everywhere else, and just let it dry. Uh, and then you can see we've got the clear, the gloss clear on the dials there to give the look of glass. So that's the, uh, that's what we're after there. So let's start to get this together as per the instructions. So here you can see they're telling us to put the, the gear stick and the handbrake lever in there. And then we've got the instrument panel going to go on onto the top of that tunnel. So, first things first, uh, I'm just going to look here at how that is going to fit on. And I think what I'm going to have to do is not scrape any paint off. I'm going to let the glue do the work because I think this is going to be held in place by the cowl, any the, the front panel anyway. So the first thing we do is put the gear stick and the handbrake lever in. So we'll get those cut off the sprue. So we can cut that one off of there. And we can cut that one off of there, leaving a little pip on the bottom as we got as we need. There we go. Then we can throw that sprue away. So we'll work from the inside out. So we'll just do a little test fit. Is this gonna fit in there? Which way round does it go? I've got it the right way. It goes with the little L-shaped lug pointing backwards. That's just going to sit in that hole. And because of all the paints and primers and everything, it doesn't want to go in. So we'll just grab a little sanding stick and we will just clean up the bottom. Just remove some paint, remove the sprue nib from the bottom. We'll see how that's looking now. It's better. I reckon oh. I reckon if I can just get it just to hold there I can push it in. But it's getting it to stay there. Nope, it really is refusing. So if I just push on the base, there we go. So that's gone in there. Let's just get a drop of extra thin into the joint. It'll also kind of act as a lubricant and help it go in a bit better as well. It naturally wants to fall over into towards the sea. I don't know why. But that's gone in now. 
you can see that one's in there. I don't know why, but it naturally wants to fall over to the left. Maybe it's supposed to, who knows. And then the gear stick is going to go in. Just have it facing back. Let's hope that pin is a good fit. Just give it a turn and make sure it's in the right orientation. Whoops. This is the problem. When you get start to get paint on everything, you will struggle. In some parts, in some, some manufacturers you'll struggle with the fit. So what we do is just put a little bit of glue on there. That will dissolve the paint that's in the hole. And then as soon as this comes anywhere near it, the glue will dissolve the paint that's on the stick. And it should, he says, go together. I've nearly snapped the stick off now, I think. There we go, that's gone in now. So yeah, my advice to you there would be to drill it out. I need to be very careful because I've nearly stacked the stick off where I tried to push it in and the tweezers slipped. What I should have done is drilled the hole out. But there we go, that's in there now, that's not going anywhere. And you can see we've got a gear stick and a handbrake lever in there in place now. I may come with a little brush and just touch up where you can see where the, the tan plastic is showing through. In fact there should probably be a, a gaiter on the bottom, it should probably be like a leather colour. So we'll have a look at that. Um, so now the instrument panel is just going to drop on and it's going to sit. You've got a, a, a lip on here that will go into a recess in there. And it does fit beautifully in, just like so. It sort of clips into place almost. And we're going to have to rely on the the glue to do its thing and uh, attack the paint. And therefore, glue it in. So there we are. That's gone in there now. Some glue across the back, and as I say, hopefully the the glue in there will attack the paint, and it will give us a good join. So that's the dashboard in. So now we've got the all of a sudden it's starting to take shape, isn't it? So we've got the steering wheel, we've got the dashboard, all that's in there. The gear stick and the handbrake lever. So now we've got this front panel, which I'm going to remove. Remember, I broke the the rules of the instructions and I have actually changed the build sequence and I've fitted these side parts before we fit this in. So hopefully I won't regret doing that. Now that's going to drop over there and those tabs are going to go in and I'm betting those tabs will need the paint removed from them. So we just scrape the paint from them and on the front just like so. If you've ever built a wingnut wings kit then you'll know only too well that with a wingnut wings kit this is even worse. When I say worse it's not a bad thing, it's it's good, I mean it all, all fits together very very well. But um that's just gonna drop into there. Go into these holes in the floor. They don't want to go anywhere near it. Yeah, those holes are tiny in comparison to those pegs, so we will now come in with a knife and scrape away, cut away whatever some plastic from those holes. We'll 
see how that looks. In hindsight, if I was doing another one of these, I would test fit this before I fit the dashboard. Because that is a very tight fit over the dashboard. There we go. So that's all gone together. We've got a piece of plastic down in there which looks horrible. I need to take this away because we've got this shard of plastic down there which is looking horrible. There we go, that's our instrument panel, windscreen, everything in place. We could just do a dry fit just to test the roof. That fits beautifully. Absolutely gorgeous. So we can come along and from underneath we can glue that in there. That's that fitted in, we won't give it a squeeze. And then we've also got this area here that we can put some glue. That's all gone together, and then we got there's not touching there, so we won't bother with that. As you can see now, while I did this work here, I got that done as a flat piece because now getting in there with everything else in the way is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So that's that done. So now I'm going to just remove some paint from there. And then with my round blade remove some paint from here. Make sure we've got all the shards of plastic gone, and then we can drop our roof down onto there, just like so. We can see that it doesn't want to stay. So it's time we can come along we can pour some glue in from behind so we don't get glue marks on the surface we can put some glue into there the same over here And perhaps put some in the doorway here. That will feed it under there. There we go. And then a tiny drop, not too much because we've already got that masking tape there, we don't want it to get onto that. Worth remember, I gave that a squeeze, and the and the windscreen laid forward, moved forward. You can see there the glue marks. So that's worth bearing in mind. Be careful of that. Make sure the windscreen is pushed back. Okay, so there we go. So that can all now be left to dry. I think what I might do is put some super glue in there, because we appear to have a gap. So if we just grab, this is just the, the cheap off-the-shelf super glue. I'm just going to put a drop there and a drop there. Because super glue will have the effect of filling the gap and sort of bridging it. It will help to just lock that into place. And there we go. And you can see now we have... A fully 
track may be better. Fully built up cab, we've got our instrument panel in there. Try and get the lighting a bit better for you so you can actually see what I'm trying to show you. But we've got the instrument panel in there. This is hopeless. I've got the floor. I can't show you in there guys, I cannot get the light to go in. It's just not enough ambient lighting. So there we go. Happy with that. Just gonna do a quick check. Check that the roof fits okay. And it does. It looks like this panel wants to pull itself forward. You can see there by the glue that's coming out, just rubbing that with my nail. It actually wants to go forward, so I'm going to grab a piece of tape. And then pull it back. Put the tape in like that and that will hold it back in position then. Yeah, it's pulling forward on both sides. Let's grab another piece of tape. Put some glue down there just to help it stay in position but for some reason it keeps wanting to push forward so that should hold it back into place and once again we can test fit the roof all is good you can see I still haven't glued this rear panel just in case the roof doesn't fit you can see we've got room to play with that now because it's not glued in place So there we are. And I'm tempted once again to get my super glue just to give it a bit of a lock. Just going to put a drop there and a drop there. And then we can grab a cocktail stick. Just push it around so it works into that joint. Then, with the accelerator here, I can hold hold the roof back. Just let the accelerator go into there, and that will dry instantly, and that will lock it in place. It won't go anywhere now. I'm just going to put some on the front there, just like that, and that will instantly set that so it's all locked in place now. So there we go. I use the accelerator like that in the aerosol can. What many people do is have a little dispenser or they use a, a, a brush or something. Um, but I just did that quickly because I was not intending to do it, I wasn't prepared, I just grabbed the can. What I would normally do is spray some on the mat and then use a cocktail stick. To apply it but um it doesn't really matter if you get it everywhere that stuff there that's the vital bond it doesn't affect paint it doesn't affect the plastic um some of them you have to be careful especially on clearer parts it will fog them so that now is all locked in place so now we can take that tape away we no longer need that and i'll put that down here so it can be reused rather than throw it away because it's just it's only been used once and I'm just going to quickly at the best stage I've got glue oozing out of this joint I, want, I don't want oozage so I'll just get the extra thin brush we'll have to do some work on that seam it's not good I 
I'll have to do some work in there, Mr. Surfacer or something. But um, there we go. That's that. We'll just check once again. The roof all fits. We've got a nice seam across there. We've got a nice seam there. So what we'll do is we'll get the roof on, and then we'll deal with all this seam work. You can see we need to sand a little bit off of there to get that to go slightly lower. You can see here we've got a a gap. All in all, it's very, very nice. Very nice indeed. There we are. Right. So I think we'll call that a day for part 12. It's been part 12, isn't it? Um, because we've got the cab together, which is what we intended to do. Let all that dry. I'm going to go in there with some paint and just touch up the bottom of that gear stick because it doesn't look very nice. This tan plastic sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, and then we'll um, then we'll go from there. And I think next we'll be doing the uh, interior of the roof. I've got that here off the sprue. It's all painted, obviously, and pre-shaded. That's going to fit into there, and then we're going to drop the roof on. But before we do that, we're going to do something with the floor and, uh, and go from there. And then we'll get this rear end all done at the same time as the roof. And then it will be Mr. Surfacer time, filling any gaps or anything. And then we're sort of really on the home stretch then. And we'll just check on camera just before we uh, do go. We will just check on camera how all this fits. Do-de-do-de-do. that it's beautiful it goes together beautifully you can see now we've really got the the shape in here of a Katie oh, I spoke too soon didn't I right, get that back together there go on right, you stay on there hold this together like so right so we got our instrument panel our instrument panel our bonnet going on there and then the grill wherever that is is gonna pop into there like so then you can see we have KT so then as I say that's it for part 12 I'll see you back for part 13, and we're getting very, very close to the end now. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.